There was a boy, halfway grown, skin all the brown his ancestors once carried. If you knew him, you love him quick, call him little bro, rest your arm on his shoulder and let your Saturdays become his new home. His voice wasn't heavy yet. It was still a swing on the playground, a game of horse, a do you like me, say yes kind of noise. There was a girl, her skin a beautiful coffee stain, eyes deep enough to swim in but never drown. More inquisitive than most her age, she was always a question staring at the world for answers. She made most grown-ups prophetic. They would all say, this little girl gonna be a teacher, amazed at how her early mind worked. There he was, breathless from playing house in the bottom of grandma's home, the basement, a hiding place for his cousins to run and wrestle and be all that puberty demanded. Playing with a girl he knew, they went from basement to bathroom. He went from virgin to an open door, swinging with the sound of lust and lions, readying themselves to devour every bit of identity he was never given. He sat, eyes wide and insecure, exchanging his body for hers there. Sex and syringe were made into metaphor. Her and every other body like it made into drug there. He thought he learned something new about himself. He thought her body gave him his first name. He thought her thighs could tell him who he was. He thought lust and love had the same hands. There she was, barely five, a tiny giggle on the playground, carefree and anxious for nothing except for more time at recess to make as much friends as she could. It was there when she first felt the urge to call another girl her own, where in her mind she replaced princes in Disney movies for princesses and it felt right. It felt good and natural like the breeze making her skin hush on a warm summer night. And then she was six, still a small field of innocence, wide-eyed and growing into herself. On the lower level of a family friend's home is where her life began to bloom tragic. The room was dim, darkness tucked between each corner in the basement is where he named her his victim. Daddy gone, living somewhere coward safe, couldn't hear her heart trying to claw through her chest. So some teenage boy, his hands much bigger than hers, made her feel safe. And then confused, and then scared in a matter of minutes. That day, molestation made a mockery of her small body. That boy became an almost man, addicted to the sound of his name in a woman's mouth. If you asked him if he knew their names, he'd describe their bodies. He'd tell his friends how he got her to get underneath him without God's well done and hear them open their mouths with praise. they pat him on his back and stretch their smiles at how he got so good at conquering pieces of land and planting his flag on foreign soil. That brown boy colonized bodies like it was his right to live in someone else's country, but he didn't know where else to call home. Every woman was a house and a hug and a I see you, you refugee of a boy. That little girl grew up only making women her safe house. She would dine between their breasts while telling them all of her fears and afterwards she would make a bed out of their torsos. She was now in a colorful world she can call her own, where rainbows were no longer a promise but freedom from dark closets where she hid from the burning stare of church folk, far from that dark basement and where she played out all she knew she was at recess. She was now gay, but the absence of true happy only someone sovereign can bring her often left her joyless. After Jesus, I met him, a boy, Chicago born, built like a city of winded kings. Before him, the only people I'd ever loved were called woman. Women were to me a cathedral, beautiful and religious even. Their ability to make worshipers out of a secular born body was worth writing a poem for. While with them, I became unlike them, sagged my pants, flattened my chest, sat down, legs wide, as if I had something between them to protect my voice. Already a cello played with one hand made women obedient. They treated me like the man they wished men could be, but as much as I tried, I couldn't be what they were created for. Meeting the man God made to be mine was scary. To see him was to see the man named Daddy that came and left like he couldn't stand to see his face on somebody he didn't love. To see him was to remember all the men before him that taught me that trust ain't safe with nobody but God. But what happens when God is telling you to give your trust to somebody that ain't him? When I met her, she was now a saint, and I had met God too. Our hearts knew as the wet earth when God first whispered the world into existence. Because of grace, I was now learning to see women as women and not bodies to lay my insecure. Most midnights, I fought to enter into God's presence instead of entering into a woman to feel whole. 
Hard when your skin worshipped a woman's touch for so long. Hard when for so long created beings with soft hands held my broken instead of the God who made their hands. Silly how I often doubted if his touch can make me feel new as theirs did. But she intrigued me. I heard her voice before I saw her hips. Her honest tongue and mouth ready with truth grabbed my heart and wouldn't let it go. God knew I needed a woman that I'll give my respect without her asking for it. Three years of friendship was enough. I was ready for her to wear my last name. Then, then we, we became, became one. When, when I, I said I do, I didn't know one flesh was literal. literal. As much as I wanted to hide my, my shame, shame and fears and failures. failures. I had too many skeletons in my closet to act like I wasn't dead before. before. Sex made me feel alive, but now my flesh had to die for another. No, no one, one told me my my wedding was also a funeral. My hands a casket for the flowers to lay. My dress a white lie. Couldn't the guests see all the dust I'd come from? All the dust I was going to? Couldn't, Couldn't they see the, the girls and the porn and the, and the girls and the lust and all the things God set me free from? Set us free from the pride and the fear and all the things God put us together, together to make each other free from? Is it a mystery how God's sovereignty magic tricked us from two sexually broken people and made us one flesh whole in matrimony and made us holy? Identities now up to God to give, for God to define. For for Jesus, Jesus to see and tell us who we are. We are his and each other's. And ain't that a miracle? The process of turning two into one, unclean into forgiven, the visibility of God's voice when we became the Lazarus to whom he spoke. This boy, a man now, a husband, mine, he has been to me a mercy every new morning. I don't think of all the women she has known when we wake. I remember them as God does. Therefore, I forget them as God does. When they come to hunt us both, reminding us of what God buried, both his struggle and mine, we die together as promised. I live for all the ways he says I love you without words. When he holds my heart with both hands, I say his name under my breath. You'd have to be him to know what it sounds like out loud. I promised God I would love her like fragile hearts can't break. He threw our past into a sea deep as mercy. How dare I dwell on the women she cradled before me when God gave us a right now love. Our marriage is not void of struggle, but when I see her, I don't see her sin. I see a song God is still writing. Every dawn she is cloaked in God's newness. She is a fresh scent on my tongue, a sweet residue left on my lips. When she leaves, I smuggle the memory of her beneath my breath. And when she returns, I kiss her soft. And all of nature begins to sing of God's goodness and how he made our love abstract art. I, I vowed to do this. this. I, I took this woman, man, to be mine, to have it to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for sexually broken or whole, and in perfection and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us.